So let's solve this problem. So we are not able to run this code, right? This is not working. We want to get hello world on the screen. It was working with JShell because JShell says you just pass a statement, I will work. But then when you build an application, when you run the application, how exactly it works behind the scene, once we understand that, we, we can write this code. So in your machine, you will be having something called JVM. Now, by default, when you say Java is platform independent, it's because of JVM, because in your machine, you will be having JVM. Irrespective of which OS you use, it can be Windows, Linux based OS, or Mac, or whatever famous OS we have, it will have JVM installed. And of course, if you have JVM, you can run Java application. And if you don't have JVM, you can't run Java application. Okay, so we got JVM here, right? Now what JVM says, hey, I will work. But then there's one question. When you say JVM will work, but JVM works on which environment? So underlying, we have your OS. So this is your OS. And then your OS is working on a hardware, right? So you'll be having a hardware. It can be a laptop. It can be a desktop. It can be a phone. doesn't matter. You have a hardware. On top of that, we have an OS. On top of that, we have something called JVM. Now, JVM says, okay, my job is to execute a Java code. Okay, so whatever Java code you create, JVM will execute that. But then JVM will not accept the code directly. See, what happens is Java goes in multiple steps in Java application. When you as a programmer, so let's say you are a programmer here, and when you write a code, you will not directly run, write a code which will run on JVM, okay? Uh, and we don't even do that, right? We don't even write a code which directly works on the hardware. And we don't even write a code which works directly on OS. Java says, if you want to make it work, you have to run your code on JVM, but then JVM will not understand what you're talking about. And one more, th one more thing we have talked about, right? Java is platform independent. So what does platform independence mean? It simply means that you can run your application on any machine. Okay, so when you write a Java code, it will run on any machine irrespective of the hardware or the OS. But the only thing it requires is that machine need to have JVM. So irrespective of which platform I'm talking about, if it has JVM, your application becomes platform independent. But JVM itself is platform dependent, okay? So example, you can't run JVM on iOS. So we can't say Java is platform independent when JVM itself is, is dependent. So yes, your application is independent, JVM is not. So JVM need to be built for a particular OS. And let's say if it is Windows, in my, so in my machine it is Mac, but let's say if it is Windows, we have JVM available on Windows. So your JVM says, hey, I will run your code, but you have to submit me not the Java code, but something called a byte code. So you have to convert your code into a unreadable format for a normal human being. And this is called a byte code. Because JVM only understands byte code. But can you write byte code? Of course not. You only understand English type of languages, right? So whatever we have written in the code, uh, we have uh, written system.out.print. It's English-like language, right? So what you create is a Java code. So this is your Java file or Java code. And then you have to convert this Java code. So this is Java code, which is more of readable. This is not something which you can read. So basically you have to convert this into a Java code or byte code. So for that, we have something in between here, which is called a compiler. Now, since this is a Java compiler, we can call it as Java C, which is Java compiler. Okay. So basically you will write this code. So this code will be getting compiled into a byte code and that byte code goes on the JVM. It will run. Okay. Makes sense, right? So that means when you write something, it will go into bytecode and then bytecode will run on JVM. Now, the only thing is, see, your project can be a big project, right? Here, I'm writing only one file. It can be 10 lines of code. It can, it, it can be 10 files. It can be 100 files. It can be 1,000 files. Out of all these files, there will be only one file with JVM will execute. Okay, JVM will start with the first file. And then, of course, that file will depend upon other files and it will execute. So JVM says, you need to tell me what that file is okay so if you even if you have thousand files which you want to run in your project you have to give the first file so in this case what you will do is you will specify hey that's my first file so when you run the code you will specify the first file and also that file need to have something called a main method okay so as i, as I mentioned before right we have print in the same way we have main so your file the first file need to have a main method so when I say first file, it is not like you have to follow a sequence, create this file, then that, that file. Out of all the files in your project, the execution will start from the first file, which you specify. 
okay and that file need to have main not just main it is looking for a specific signature okay so when i say signature it means the entire method signature uh, the method name what are the values you are passing and all those stuff and of course all this term you will you will get used to in some of these sessions don't worry so first you have to make sure that you provide a main and main has a particular signature again what each word means that we'll see later so the signature is this it is public static void main so you have to remember always pass this method i know there are four words but then this is the thing you have to remember and main will accept some arguments some parameters so you have to pass string a now again we'll discuss this what this string is what is public static void we'll discuss that in some time but main is looking for this signature so your code will not work without this signature okay so remember this so that makes sense so what are the steps you have to follow so the first step is as a programmer you will be creating a java file okay now once your java file is ready you will put that into compiler then compiler will compile it then that code becomes a byte file a byte code basically then you will take this byte code you will run that on jvm now once you once your jvm says okay i'm running the code jvm will look for this particular syntax it should be there in your code and then you will get the output right simple stuff okay now there's a space in between here if you can see this is a space uh, i have let, left that space intentionally because we'll add certain things there so at this point just remember there's a space here there's a, there's a box remaining here we'll, we'll add that box in in some time now once we have understood all those things it's time to expand this code now if you remember we have to write everything in a main right so this section should be a part of remember what jvm will ask you for jvm will ask you for main so we have to put that into main so what is syntax for main it's very simple it is public static void main we have seen that of course this words will define that words in the upcoming session and once you understand all these terms you are java programmer right uh, and in this we'll say string a and that's it this is a syntax you have to follow now there's one more thing uh, in java now java is object oriented now what is object oriented means we'll discuss that later but in simple terms object oriented means everything should be an object and to create object we need a class okay again we'll discuss all those things in the upcoming session but a class is missing here in fact if you compile this code this is what your java say will tell you java say says hey where is your class your class is missing okay let's do that so let's put that a class here and we'll give a class name at this point we'll keep the class name and file name same and we'll say open bracket and close and we'll give an indentation so basically we have to follow this thing always give a tab so every time you open a curly back give a tab it looks good okay there's no compulsion it looks good and we love to build stuff which also runs and looks good okay so this looks good right ignore this x and this suggestions uh, these are the extra suggestions coming from your vs code but you know that part in fact is it because happening of this extension let me just remove this so let's not use that extension because it will give you suggestion it's good for development but not for teaching purpose so it adds extra text there okay cool so this is how you you write your code okay we got a class a file name and then public static void main in bracket you have to mention the parameters again we'll discuss that later and the only thing important statement here is system.out.print hello world okay now let's see if this works let's create the screen and compile you can see there is no error but the moment i compiled if you can see on the left hand side we got this extra file we got hello.class now this is your byte code remember we have talked about a byte code here this is a file which got created automatically so when you create a java file when you send it for the compilation it will create the byte code and the extension for the byte code is dot class file the extension for java code is dot java file and now it is compiled done right now it's time to run your code so remember when i mentioned to run you have to use jvm and for that you have to use a command which is java and you have to mention the class name not a file name this time just a class name the class name is hello and say enter you can see we got hello world so yeah that's how it, that's how it works so simple stuff that's why we can able to complete our code and we are able to run this code now if you have done till now give a round of applause or a pat on your back because you deserve it okay so this makes sense right so there's a gap here right so let's remove this gap so what 
we have here. So basically, you know, when you when you run your code, basically think about you're cooking something in a kitchen, right? So where do we cook? Of course, in a kitchen, right? Why not in a hall or in a bedroom? It's because in the kitchen to cook something, you need extra things, right? Example, if you make a biryani, I don't know if you know the recipe, even I don't know the recipe, but if you make a biryani, you have to add extra ingredients, right? Now, those things are kept in the shelf. So in the kitchen, you will not just have that resources which you there in the platform, but also you will be having extra stuff. Now the same way, if you want to run your Java application, you need extra libraries and you also need a runtime. Now runtime is something which where you can run things, right? Now you can run something in a JVM, so that is part of run, but then what if you need some extra libraries? You have to, you need, you need an environment as well. So Java provides you one more thing. So we have one more layer here, which is about your OS which is called JRE. So when you want to run something, you use JRE to run it. Now JRE stands for Java Runtime Environment. And what is your JVM? JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine. Okay, so basically we have two things. We have a JVM and we have a JRE. Now JVM is a part of JRE. Now what else you will be having inside your JVM? You will be having some libraries. So JVM with libraries is a part of JRE. So whenever you run something, it runs inside the JRE and JVM is actually responsible to run it. Okay. And by default, when you, when you want to run your application on any platform, it need to have JRE, which will have JVM. Now, not every machine will have Java C. Java C is only for development purpose, right? So we can imagine this in this section. Uh, so basically we have an outer box, which is your JDK, which is used by developers inside which you will be having something called JRE and in this you will be having JVM. So as a developer, you will be installing JDK, JDK will have JRE, JRE will have JVM. But to run something on any other machine, let's say if you have made the application, you want to run this on your friend's machine, your friend's machine will only have JRE and JVM. JDK is not required. And that's why we say Java is Vora, which is write once and run anywhere. Right, so you just have to write on your machine, you can run it on any other machine, provided you have JRE and JVM installed. So that's how your Java works behind the scene. I hope it makes sense now and we'll write some more code in the upcoming videos.